y'all? Hey, hello, fun, and welcome back to Kerbo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the CST100 Starliner mod, which is uh, originally been made by XX Hansen Max. It's now been taken over by Avoid Cosmos. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build your very own version of the real life Boeing CST100 Starliner with command pods, service module, and all that good stuff. It's a pretty fun little pack of parts. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. Though before we do, uh, there are, of course, prerequisites. To get everything functioning correctly, you will be required to also have a raster prop monitor as well as the asset props pack. Now, there are also some recommended ones like Habtech 2 and USI Survivability Pack, but the only two required are the first two I mentioned there. And with those installed, everything should look a proper. So let's have a gander at our first part here and probably the most important considering you know what the mod is and that is the command pod of the CST 100 which is actually an unmanned command pod but with the ability for holding seven Kerbals inside now it does also of course have the usual data transmitter RCS reaction wheel crew report it also does have a battery holding 350 electric charge and a tank holding 120 monopropellant and if we just pop this thing on here, you can see it is a pretty large command pod. In fact, it is in the size category of 3.75 meters. And it is a pretty cool looking thing. A bit strange looking for how normal command pods in this game look, as you've got this like weird little bit down here, weird little bit up there. But those are, of course, for some of the other parts that fit over them, like a parachute goes around there, the heat shield there, etc. But I do do love all the details on this thing it looks pretty good you got the nice handhold there that little panel just all the good and well placed RCS ports it is a good looking command pod now let's uh, check this baby off and head to the fuel tanks category where we have our next part and that is the CST-100 service module, which has got quite a bit. It is, of course, a decoupler. It also has built-in RCS and holds electric charge of 500, liquid fuel of 540, mono propellant of 200, and oxidizer of 660. But that's not all. It even has a built-in solar panel providing 3.5 electric charge per second. And if we pop this thing on here, you can actually uh, see that solar panel on the bottom and uh despite the command pod probably being the most important bit i think the solar panel built in here is my favorite bit because it's just such an unusually shaped solar panel i love it for that it's odd and that intrigues me but yes all in all a very good uh, service module for the whole thing of course with it fitting uh, snugly to the uh, bottom of our command module there and uh, having plenty of little holes for engines to go into and most intriguingly tiny little holes for tiny little engines which we're gonna look at now so down to the uh, engine category the first one we have here is the CST 100 OMAC. Now it'll only produce 16 kilonewtons of thrust with an ISP of 470 using liquid fuel and oxidizer. Does also have though a gimbling range of 10 degrees. And as you can see here it is a real small little engine. Nothing really too special model wise as it's basically one of the models that we already have in the game but you know what it works quite nicely in this mod with the different stat changes serving its purpose now the next one we're gonna have a look at here is the LV-1R Spider liquid fuel engine very similar in look to the previous one but producing a lot less thrust at two kilonewtons with an ISP of a 290 using liquid fuel and oxidizer and again having that 10 degrees of gimbling and once more if we pop it on there nothing too special model wise but what's fun about these and in conjunction with the service module 
is that they fit into these tiny little holes. Now, sadly, both of these are radially attached engines, so they don't actually have an attachment node to them. So to get them in these tiny little holes, you have to like place them there, then use the move tool to fit them in there. But uh, just you're gonna have to be a bit fiddly and get them in you know, with a bit of fine tuning. But that is where they do go, and I kinda like that. You know, they fit nicely in rather than being on the exterior like a lot of radially attached engines. Now, as for the four holes in the bottom of the service module, these are a bit easier to get engines into as it's kind of an all-in-one deal. And that is through the CST-100 RS-88 engines. Now it's a little four cluster of engines providing 560 kilonewtons of thrust with an ISP of 300 using liquid fuel and oxidizer. No gimbling on this one, that control really seems to be coming from those two smaller engines, but as you can see here, it has a nice little attachment node, and you don't want to go with the bottom attachment node here, that's for the, uh, you know, decouplers and such. And if you hold down alt, you can kind of finagle your way into an interior attachment node, but this one too is a little bit finicky to actually get there we go fits in like a glove so you got those engines just coming out of those little ports there very nice indeed chuck it all off though we no longer need it now after that we got nothing in command and control but in structural maybe I probably should have kept the service module because it does kind of fit in line with these two parts the first being the CST 100 2.5 meter adapter now let's take it from that 3.75 meter size down to the 2.5 meter size and it is also a decoupler with an ejection force of 75 and as you can see here it's uh it's a big one. I do love the little structural elements. Actually, if I pop it up top there, I like these uh, structural elements on the interior. Very good looking. Now, after that, we also have the CST-100 Aero Skirt. Similar sort of purpose, though rather than being an adapter, it's just straight on down from 3.75 to 3.75. Again, though, decoupler with an ejection force of 75 there. And, uh, yeah, again, if we pop it on, you've got just a nice little thing. And with some cool little structural bits on the interior and, of course, attachment nodes on the bottom and top. Good times. Now, after that, we got nothing in robotics. In coupling, though, who boy, we got a couple of things. We're going to look at uh, three of them together, though, and those are the NASA docking system type 1, 2, and 3. They are more or less identical docking nodes, just with slightly different designs for... I don't know the proper name for those things, but the bits that stick out. They just all have slightly different designs there. But all of them are, of course docking nodes and they look pretty good now after that we also have the nasa international docking adapter similar but a bit more interesting looking as you can see there some nice uh, design to it and again it's a docking port so let's pop on uh, that one there i prefer this one because it's just i think the most interesting looking but the type 1 2 and 3s up here you know are good as well and if you are wanting a more sleek look to things yeah you know you can get that with these as well yeah the docking adapter one is a lot thicker of an element but still a fun one now in a payload we got nothing in aerodynamics though we've got a little nose cone in fact it is the CST 100 nose cone which is a nose cone and a decoupler with a ejection force of 25 and if we pop that on there it doesn't really fit for this particular command pod but you you know you you get the idea it's just a white nose cone fun now nothing in ground but in thermal we do of course have the uh, heat shield for this whole thing which is the CST 100 heat shield an ablator with 650 ablator to it also a decoupler with 75 ejection force and if we pop that on there you can see it's just you know a big heat shield fun now after that we've got nothing in electrical nor communications science or cargo but in utility we have our final part and that is the cst 100 parachute it's a parachute and it fits on top of the little nubbin bit on the uh, command pod so you know what works well lovely little thing pop that on there just a good nice parachute don't really have much else to say there it's a parachute 
All right, so let's actually uh, open up a uh, craft file here real quick just to take a look at the whole system together. Now, this is the craft file from the mod that comes with. It has a few things on there like Mech Jeb Core and whatnot. Uh, again, other things that could be recommended to use but aren't necessary. And if we just load it up, it loads in just fine. And yeah, they all look quite good together. You can see all the tiny little engines just fitting into their little perspective holes there quite snugly. Now again, just a little finicky to get them in there. But you know what? Doable. My one complaint is with the docking port and the nose cone. Guys, well, as you can see here, those little bits that I don't know the proper name of kind of end up sticking outside of the nose cone, which is a little weird. But it's a minor issue usually, and quite frankly, half the time I launch a craft with a docking port, I don't put on a nose cone anyways because, eh. There's actually no, uh, like, aerodynamic stuff on the nose cone. It is purely just a decoupler. So for me, I just launch without it. But yeah, it is there. It is there. So let's actually go into space where I have one of these in orbit already so we can take a look at the interior of the command pod. And, uh, yeah, I love how many Kerbals it does hold. Seven Kerbals on that thing. So, you know, you'll be able to get quite a bit of crew. And since it is an unmanned command pod, it's perfect for sending up a crew to a station. Then it can return on its own without any issues whatsoever. Let's take a look at the interior view there. A pretty simple cockpit. Mainly glass using the raster prop monitor stuff. And a bunch of fun little switches from, of course the asset props pack so a uh, good uh, there and yeah always do love when uh, mods include these things as well it's just fun to play around with this stuff and as for the next seat there we've got sort of three across here at the top and you can kind of see their feet down at the bottom we've got four along the bottom row let's head over to the last of the top row on there a little screen for uh, them and then down we go to the bottom area where we have uh, the four. Excellent. A little bit more boring of a view. No screens to look at unless you want to kind of crick your neck up. But hey, there it is for you. But all in all, a very fun, very spacious command pod. Surprisingly spacious, in fact. But good. I like it. Again, nice to have a command pod with that many personnel that it can hold. And looks good while doing it. And the service module, great thing. Lots of great resources there. I do, of course, love, just disproportionately love the solar panels on here. Again, I don't know why, but it makes me happy. And all in all, it's just a fun little craft for you to use. So if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is gonna be it for this episode today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!